Hey, what is up, Wendekunnet? Kind of? My name is Shane, and that's Griffin, and this is WHTV. Your boys are back on desk. To put a little extra entertainment in the show. Shane, I'm surprised you even showed up. You haven't been to school lately. Yo, that my bad. I've been training hard for this breast cancer race, because you know your boy had to take the double dub. I don't think it's a race. It's more of a walk. Yeah, whatever you say. Let's check out this story on the breast cancer walk to see who's right. This past weekend, the annual Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk was held in Exeter, New Hampshire. Many businesses and SECO's organizations participate in this fundraiser each year to help raise awareness and find a cure for breast cancer. Students and teachers from Winnicott even came out in support of this event. One in eight women will be affected by breast cancer sometime in their life so chances are, you know a loved one who has fought this fight. This year, 613 people participated in 59 teams, and upwards of $78,000 was raised this weekend. Uh, every year the volleyball team comes out. Uh, throughout the year we raise a lot of money for breast cancer awareness, and we come out and do the walk. And here we are! Yay! Uh, okay, so the ROTC is here today just to, you know, support the uh, survivors and all that, you know. Our goal over there is to do as much community service as we can. We love coming out here and representing uh, Winnicott in the community in the Marine Corps. We're part of the Seco Civic Dance Company, which is part of Napa, and we just dance. And we're here to participate in the Breast Cancer Walk at Exeter, New Hampshire. We love dancing, it's such a great <laughs> thing for us and we loved our crowd today, the audience was great yeah. and everyone's here doing such a great job participating and supporting this wonderful walk for a great cause yeah. and we're so lucky to be a part of it. <laughs> this year we raised $5,000 and in the past 10 years the volleyball program has raised $50,000 so yeah. We had a good turnout today and uh, I'm really proud of all the guys and girls that came out and we looked sharp so and the event you know turned out great. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month so spread the word and save a life. Adel and Emily for WHTV. Finish the fight against breast cancer! Save the boobies! Save the tatas! Woo! <laughs> Finish the fight against breast cancer! Wow, Shane, that's awesome that you devoted your time to that walk. Yeah, well, I should have, but I didn't really. I was home sleeping. I thought so. Yeah, what happened while I was gone? Did you do anything fun? No, I got no money left. Lately, I've been spending all on concert tickets. Last one I went to was Kiss. Kiss? It's sick backwards. Wow. Let's hope the star on concerts will be Till. <laughs> Lit classic. Adel Hamdi and Mike Moser here coming at you with a story about concerts. So what makes a good concert good? We're going around Winnicott to ask students and teachers what they prefer. Social studies teacher Mr. Walls is an expert on local music. We decided to interview him on venues around the seacoast. Uh, first of all, I write about music for a local arts and entertainment paper, so I go to a lot of shows. Um, I'm involved in a new project called 3S Art Space, which is in Portsmouth, and it is a venue and uh, museum space, art space, and a restaurant. So uh, I'm involved in some of the programming there, and I think that's my favorite uh, venue in town. It's got the best sound, and they have the best uh, booking in my opinion. I mean there's so much going on in Portsmouth and Dover and, and, and Kittery. Kittery has Bowie uh, which is a great art space there. They have great shows. An important part of music are festivals. Festivals are a gathering of artists in an open venue. Local festivals include Bowie and Thing in the Spring. We asked Mr. Wallace which was his favorite. The Pawtucket Way Takedown Festival is really fantastic. They combine uh, arts and theater and music, and it's it's right near uh, Pawtucket Way State Park, and it's out in the woods, and it's it's a great food and great theater and, and great art and great music, and it's just a lot of a lot of fun. This past weekend was the Boston Callings Music Festival. Student Eve Olin attended the festival, so we decided to interview her on her perspective. So. This past weekend I went to my second festival ever. Um, I saw 
Cozier, Ben Howard, Daughter, um, Mr. Wives, and a little bit of Alabama and the Shakes, and then for the other ones I went and ate and stuff like that. Otherwise it was a really good experience, like the vibe of a festival is a lot different than a concert, it's just a lot more relaxed. Um, there aren't as many like screaming teenagers in like most concerts, it's kind of more like a mature feeling, like I don't know, it's, it's less like about being near a famous person and it's more about like listening to the music. So now that you know more about concert venues, we hope to see you out there. Have a safe and fun concert experience. This is Mike Moser and Adel Hamdi signing out. Wow, I learned about a lot of concerts that I'll probably never go to. Don't be ashamed. I still learn things every day. You're right. Want to learn something dope? Bro, I'm always down to learn. Next Tuesday and Wednesday, the Old Soul will be having their annual haunted house. The spooky attraction will take place from 5 to 9 both nights and will be $5 per person, which is a sixth of the price of the other local attraction, Haunted Overload. You can expect to be scared, so go in at your own caution. Mr. Yane has been putting in a lot of work with help from the students at Winnicunnan who volunteered. Prepare to be spooked! I actually already knew that. How? That must mean you read your email announcements. What can I say? Ms. Kraft is a nice lady. The only thing I use my email for is Google Drive. What about the Google Classroom feature? What do you mean, Google Classroom? Honestly, I've never used it, but I heard Dustin and Sarah whipped out a pretty good story about it. I guess that means one thing. Play it. Since September, 80 teachers have signed up to use Google Classroom as one of their new teaching methods. This raises the question as to whether teachers should be switching over to a digital form of education or sticking to traditional methods. Uh, I'm Dave Hobbs. I'm the technology integrator here at Winnicott High School. I've been here for as tech integrator for about three years. So Google Classroom is a, basically a platform that we use uh, in order for students and teachers to collaborate on work, uh, to communicate, uh, to ask questions and answer questions, uh, to do research. Um, it's basically like a virtual classroom. Is, is shifting to digital education more beneficial to students? Um, some of them. Um, I think technology is a tool just like any other. Um, but what it does do for our kids is it allows them access to their work 24 hours a day. It allows them to access their school stuff from home, from class, um, and, and have a place that's secure and stable in order to, um, to get their work done. Many students find that using Google Classroom was an easy way to turn in assignments, while others find it complicated and difficult to use. Google Classroom is different from regular homework, because with regular homework, it's a... Um, it's a materialistic item, it's right in front of you. Google Classroom's online. I use Google Classroom, classroom in Fresh Sem, and we use it to give the students assignments and get feedback from them about their projects. I use Google Classroom for a few of my classes and it's kind of helpful because you can kind of look on there if you're forgetting about your homework or something. All right, I don't like Google Classroom because once you submit an assignment, you can't edit it. Teachers are using Google Classroom to send, receive, and grade assignments. Some teachers agree that it is a helpful tool, while others do not find it beneficial towards their class. This is a skill that we're going to need in the future, all of us. And so I think it's really important that we, as a staff, encourage the use of Google Classroom and um, use it consistently. So we use Google Classroom in Freshman STEM. Uh, I think it's actually really helpful and easier for the teachers and students. Uh, it allows me to push out documents to everyone. So if I want them to work on an assignment, I can give each student a copy online and electronically, which is good. Um, it keeps track of when they submitted assignments. It's, it's actually really easy and really nice for the teachers. I currently don't use Google Classroom um, for math. I haven't seen a, a major use for it right now. I feel that what I'm doing without Google Classroom is working just fine for me. I have had students say that they don't like turning in things on Google Classroom, that they find it um, too complicated. I mostly say to them that Google Classroom is about as difficult as using email. Uh, I do not use Google Classroom and anybody who has been in my class understands I don't use it because I am a clueless when it comes to computers or anything that does not involve a whiteboard and a marker. And I'm old. There you go. A great teacher with a chalkboard is more, is more effective than a mediocre teacher with a lot of technology. I'll say that right off the bat. However, um, what technology does do is it allows a, a, a good teacher to become great. It's a, it's a tool that a, a, um, influences t uh, the way we communicate. It's a tool that influences the way we collaborate with our kids. Um, 
and I think it's also maybe more importantly indicative of a of 21st century workplace, which is what we're trying to prepare you guys to enter. As you can see, many teachers think it's very useful to use Google Classroom for our near future. This is Sarah and Dustin from WHTV. NHS is holding a coat drive for families in the Seacoast from this coming Monday, October 26th until Wednesday, November 4th. Bring in any new or gently used coats to your Warrior Block classrooms. Any size jackets will be accepted and remember to wash used coats before bringing them in. All donations are welcome. Uh, dude, I gotta go. My hotline's playing. Dude. Hello? Oh, and I kind of, that can only mean one thing. Our time on desk is up. We'll catch you around. Hey, what's up, when I cut it? <laughs> Are you? Hey! Yo, my name's Griffin, and that's Shane. <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs>